Welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're on the Mississippi River in La Crosse searching for jumbo perch. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Big, beautiful fish. Oh, is that awesome. It's a huge fish! It's a huge fish! This is amazing. That is <laughs> oh awesome. my god. Yes, folks, we're up on the beautiful Mississippi River in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And Vince, you know, you live up here and you guide up here every day. But there's something special about fall in this area, isn't it? Oh, fall's a great time out here. These bluffs are gonna change colors, it'll be beautiful. The fishing just gets better every day as the water temps go down. I love it. Now, Blake, you remember fishing with Vince out of his airboat uh, on the ice last year. That was a blast. That was really fun, and we were catching big perch, and hopefully we're going to catch some big perch today. Oh, is that our target today? That's our target today. We're going to put some stripes in the boat, John. <laughs> now, what happens in the fall? The perch get real active? Yeah, they start to get real active. They start to migrate a little bit from the weeds to some more current areas, and their diet changes, but they really start putting the feed bag on as they build eggs for the spring spawn. Hey folks, so show what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. Folks, Amsoil makes a product to make everything you own run smoother and better. And today we're going to talk about firearm cleaner and firearm lubricant. Dan, these, this is a great product. Yeah, John, every time that you're out hunting, and when you come back, you want to make sure that you got firearm cleaner and lubricant uh, in your hands, and then clean your weapon up. You start off with the uh, cleaner, especially in these areas around the firing pin and mechanisms, and then come back with the lubricant. And the spray is great because you can get it in there. The spray is a new product for us this year. We had a drip bottle last year. A lot of people asked for the spray, and the spray, you can really get it into some of those fine areas. So when you're out deer hunting and you pull that trigger, you don't hear tink. It's always going to be a clean shot. And for more information, www.amsail.com. It's time to save big. Let's Ride sales event with as low as 2.99 APR for 36 months on every single Yamaha motorcycle, ATV, and side-by-side, -side. plus amazing customer cash offers. See your local Yamaha dealer for huge savings, then let's ride. How did you think this boat handled big water on Lake Superior? Oh, it handled it amazing. I mean, we had two to three footers at times, and you just glided right over the top of them. You wouldn't even feel the bumps. You could have swore it was dead calm out there. What did you think about having that many people in the boat and the fishability? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, everybody can spread out. You can have a couple in the front, a few people in the back. Uh, nobody's worrying about hooking each other and uh, everybody has their own space and you got plenty of space for uh, your fishing equipment. What do you think of the flooring? I love the flooring. Um, it's easy to fish out, it's easy on your feet. We have fish slime a lot, especially when we're catching pike. It's easy to clean, that's what I love most about it. Kind of some beautiful late spring or summer weather we're having today, folks. And we're fishing for perch on the Mississippi River. And, and Vince, you know, I've been doing a lot of muskie fishing lately, so I'm anxious for a relaxing day. And this is real simple fishing. As easy as it gets, just a hook and a worm. Yeah, I like these Aberdeen Eagle Claw hooks. I like the little gold shine yep. in the water. And uh, you say both crawlers and minnows? Yep, crawlers and minnows have been working, so we're going to use both. Hey, here we go! Blake already caught one that was too small to film. Look at this one here. Look at that perch. Look at that. Hey, I'll tell you what, anywhere you go, that's a gorgeous fish right there. And uh, hey, Vince, well, how long do you think that one is? That's got to be 10, right? Yeah, 10 and a half inches. 
<laughs> I'm getting a bite every cast here, folks. And you know, that's not a huge fish right there, but that really is actually the perfect eating size. And that's about a nine incher right there. And, and Vince, you know, you talked about the limits before, but you can get 15 perch and you can catch other fish the same day? That's correct, John. The uh, panfish limits out here are per species. So it's 15 bluegill, 15 perch, and 15 crappie. Could you actually do that? Go out and fish different species? You could. It'd be tough to fill all those limits, but it could be done. Oh, I got Yay! one! Woo! Oh, I just missed one. Yeah. I got one. Oh, Vince behind us. Look at that. Nice, you guys got this thing going, man. Go up there with Vince, Blake. And Vince has Who's a similar bigger? size. <laughs> nice. And so what depths do you uh, typically look for for these perch? This time of year, I'm looking for two to six feet of water along okay. weed edges with a little bit of current. <laughs> this is this is so cool, you guys. Look at that one there. I mean, these are just really gorgeous, average size fish. And like Vin said earlier, we're, we're along a, a real sharp weed edge here, folks. And if you cast into the weeds, it's kind of hard. But if you cast right on the edge, that's where these perch are sitting. Oh, boy, that is something. <laughs> that was right after you caught one. Oh, that's not bad. Here, hold <laughs> yeah. mine up next to yours, and we'll get an idea here. Aren't those beautiful? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but like I was saying, I cast it out right after you, and we're catching one after another. It's been only about a half hour. Here's one, right by the boat. Hey, hey, Vince, you do this every day, but it is kind of neat, like you said, when you move into your first spot. Oh, yeah, when you pull right into the first spot and start whacking them right away, it's awesome. And, you know, does this last all the way into, like, November? Yep, right up until it freezes out here, we'll be fishing for these. And then as soon as it freezes, tell the folks what you do. Then we run airboats for them and ice fish for them all winter. And then as soon as the ice is gone, we're back on them in the boat. Like Vince said, it can't get any easier than this, a split shot, a hook, and a minnow. What we're doing is the, the weed edge is about only about 25, 30 feet out. So you just cast out, and Vince, you let that go to the bottom. And once it hits the bottom, you just kind of jiggle your rod tip, right? Yep. Jiggle the rod tip and wait for the bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh! Hey, hey. <laughs> Vince, look at this one, that's, buddy. That's a big one, John. Now that is a beautiful perch. And uh, are those uncommon that size, Vince? Not super uncommon, not Boy. at all. Wow, that... and look, you can't even see the hook. I know, he just <laughs> inhaled that. Look at, that is a big, big fish. Now, was that on a minnow? Yep, just a really little minnow. Like, it, they don't have to be big, which yeah. is super, super fun to catch. These big a fish and a little minnow and a hook. Now, Vince, as we get later into fall into winter, those fish will put a lot of weight on too. Yeah, they'll start really packing the eggs in there and their bellies are just gonna swell to the point that they have stretch marks on them. Now, those are the ones we catch through the ice. Yep. Ooh, I just pulled one away. <laughs> You just missed one, didn't you, Dad? I pulled it away, you know? <laughs> oh, man. This is one of the smaller size, but still very good to eat. What, what a great place to, you know, take a family, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's so easy to uh, teach kids how to do this fishing. <laughs> No, that, oh my gosh. Hey Vince, check that one out, buddy. That's a big Whoa. one. There is a major league perch -a rooney right there. Holy cow. Take your time with him. That, folks, that is a gorgeous perch. And unbelievable. And you get such a beautiful day like this and it's nice and warm and hold that one up. Wow. That, <laughs> that is gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah, we had a little bit of a lull. Um, and I <laughs> felt this one on and I knew it was a big one. Hey Vince, look at the big hump back here on, on that. That's oh, when yeah. you know they're big ones, right? Oh, that's, that's the sign. Yeah. I don't know what I got on here, Blake. It's not a perch. What is that? I don't know here. Let's see. Oh, it's a bass. <laughs> Smallmouth bass. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> you know, we always say that when we're on the Wisconsin River, you don't, you don't know what you're going to catch. But uh, up in this area here, Vince, you know, we've caught quite a few smallmouth that we haven't filmed today. Is there a pretty good bass population up in this pool? It's pretty decent, John. There's a lot of bass. 
Not a ton of big ones, but they're around. Smallies and largey? Oh, yeah, we have both. <laughs> Blake laughed at me when I set the hook <laughs> on that one. but uh, Probably because you've been musky fishing. <laughs> that's very true. And, and Vince has got one up front there, too, at the same time. But um, it is interesting how these things bite, Blake, too, you know. Yeah. All of a sudden, you get that tap, tap, but you got to give them a little second to run with it before you set the hook. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, this is a nice one right here. Um, what do you think, Vince? That That's nine? Yeah, probably closer to 10. Closer to 10 inches long. But yeah, when you get that bite, it's like a tick, tick, tick like that, and just give them a second to move with it, and then set the hook. And that was a pretty good hook set there, too, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, there we go. look at that. And, oh yeah, good eater size. Hey, Vince, so normally, do, you, do guys that come out with you get a limit of 15? Yeah, we probably average a limit on a five hour trip. Yeah, and that's the one thing, you, you do half days. Yep, I only do half days just to try and get as many people through as possible. This has really become popular. You know, 20 years ago, I never heard about the perch on the Mississippi. It's definitely blown up and turned into a big thing. Has it always been good? It's been good as long as I've been up here. Ooh. There we go. Oh, look at that. Nice bluegill. A bluegill. <laughs> and you know, you and I talked about that earlier, but um, we, you guide bluegills, don't you, when, they, when they're going? I do, yeah. We get a pretty good bite for the bluegills all summer. And they're like how big? Uh, they probably average seven to nine inches. So really, those are nice gills, yeah. and they're that big, right? Nice quality bluegills out here. Yeah, Definitely. look at that. I mean, that's, that's a perfect eater right there. What is that, about seven and a half? Yeah, seven and a half. Yeah. The sky. We were fishing the Mississippi River in La Crosse, Wisconsin, a three and a half hour drive from Milwaukee, four and a half hours from Chicago, and two hours from Minneapolis. The waters. Eagle Claw is the only hook made right here in the USA, and they also make this new EC 2.5 bait casting combo. This combo is fast action, lightweight, and is built to stand up to long term use. Amazing. Nothing better. It flat out allows me to catch more fish. Power steering and spot lock have revolutionized what we're doing on the lake now. Faster response times when, when steering. A spot lock. Man, it's second to none. Game changer. It's a game changer. Game changer. Yeah, just an eater size. I'm still trying to catch one as big as Blake caught earlier. And, uh, but all these are keeper size, you know? And again, the one thing folks that I like about these Eagle Claw hooks that you're using, these Aberdeen hooks, is if you get stuck in wood or anything like that, you can pull them out and just bend them and put them back right in the right in place. And, and again, that little gold shimmer down there, I think, attracts the perch. There you go. Well, this feels like a good one. Well, like I said, the last one I caught is about an eight, and oh yeah, oh my, there you go. There's a fatty bumba. What's the biggest one you've ever caught here on the Miss? 15 and three quarter, John. No kidding. And that was through the ice, right? Yep, that was in winter. Now, when you guys uh, go back into those sloughs with the airboats like that, um, we talked about it before, but you said tip-ups for pike, and the pike fishing's pretty good in the winter. It is. Yeah, the pike fishing's really good in the winter. We run into a lot of them. And the other thing I wanted to know, too, was the eating quality of the fish out of here on the Mississippi. They're terrific to eat, John. Everything is? Everything is. Yeah, that's cool. Because you hear a lot of people saying, oh, I would eat those fish. But I have always loved Mississippi walleyes. Oh, they're delicious. I really like the perch. They're my favorite. Can't even get them unhooked. Ooh, there you go. Blake's got one too back here, Ryan. Blake's got one. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> look at the size of that one. Hey, nice. walk up there with Vince. He's got two in his hand from the last 30 seconds, and you got that one. Walk up there. Now that's a pretty picture, you guys. Three in a row. Yeah. <laughs> and Vince, I wanted to ask, does time of day matter for these perch? Yeah, sometimes it does. Typically they're early and late feeders, yeah. but every day is different out here. Exactly. Yeah, we got a beautiful day today and they're biting real good right <laughs> at noon. Yeah. yeah. You're running two rods up there. That's not fair. <laughs> Ooh, oh, yeah. Another good eater. No, but that's kind of a nice deal. So you just got one dead sticking out there? Yeah, just one dead stick that I'm watching and when I see the line jump, I grab it. 
<laughs> this one hit three times on the way in before I finally got him, got him to eat. And, and a lot of time, Vince, they'll just pick, pick, and do you give them some wine or what? Yeah, just let them eat it a little bit longer sometimes, and they'll get it. I'm a good. I want your best day out here, Vince. Like numbers wise. Or? Yeah. We've had days with four or five man limits out here before. No kidding. Oh yeah. I mean, we should tell the folks, you know, it's not one every minute. You got to work a little bit and you just kind of work up the weed line. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, that's all we're doing today is working up and down a weed line, chasing them around. And then when you find them, you stop. Yep, exactly. What do we got here, Vince? I don't know. It might be a sucker, John. You're oh, kidding. Yeah. Big sheep's head. Big sheep's head. Well, hey. You know what? <laughs> That's one thing. They are all over the Mississippi, aren't they? Oh, yeah. They're everywhere out here. There's no eating quality of those, is there? Some people do, not me. Yeah, right. But they do fight good. Oh, yeah. They put up a great fight. It's now time to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm, John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2021 Fishing Contest. Cheryl Carlson of Poplar caught this 30-inch walleye on Lake of the Woods on a reef runner. Vicki Head of Hilbert boated this 50-inch muskie on the Three Lakes chain on a plopper. Don Radowski of South Milwaukee caught this 22-inch largemouth on Lake Sisabagama on a buzzbait. Maxine Brzezinski of Wausau boated this 19-and-a-half-inch smallmouth on the Wisconsin River on a Kalen's crappie scrub. And this week's kid winners are Zach Beavers of Brookings caught this 19 inch smallmouth. He was using a Phelps floater. And Lincoln Bottoms of Oak Creek caught this 28 inch catfish on Tishigan Lake on chicken livers. Each week I shop online at fleetfarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week save $40 on the Compass 360 Rogue Neoprene Chest Waders on sale for $99.99 and save $20 on the Rapala Lithium Ion Rechargeable Filet Knife on sale for $69.99. That was fun catching those perch, wasn't it? It really was, and some of them were like 11 inches long. Some were 12, yes. but yeah, no, they were gorgeous. And uh, one of the things I love about coming up and fishing the Mississippi River and uh, around the Lacrosse area is you can switch gears in the middle of the day. Yeah. What we're going to do now is is do some bluegill fishing, and they've got some gorgeous bluegills up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vince was saying that there's some that are 8 inches, and he you can bring families out here, you know, to catch bluegills. It's really easy. You use a bobber and a worm. Yeah, Vince, is that the deal now? We switch to bobbers and, and just do some casting? Yep, that's exactly right, John. Now, we were talking before about trying to do well, Now, there is a, <laughs> a little big bass. smallmouth bass. <laughs> now, we were talking earlier, though, about going crappie fishing, but it's uh, you like it when the water gets colder in late October, huh? Yeah, I like a little colder weather for the crappies. So they'll actually bite better when the water temperatures drop? Yep, they'll bite from then the water starts dropping in fall all the way till it freezes. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. Nice bluegill. Oh, did he ever eat that too? Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> no, that's a solid, that's, that's coming up to eight inches. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. And I'm just using a jig and a little, uh, what are these called? Split shot. Split, Split shot. shot and a worm and <laughs> they sure do like that and we were catching a couple few little ones but you know these eight almost eight inches are beautiful fish and I'll, I'll tell you something you know blake when when i was a kid we didn't fillet those uh, yeah. we would scale them and cut the head off okay and, and uh then take the guts out and just dip them in a little bit of egg and then put them in some flour Ooh, that and put them good. in some hot grease and boy they were really good hold yeah. that one up not bad Ooh, it comes a nice turn up there girl. now. A, look at the pretty belly on that yeah. one. Ooh, that's a dandy right there, Vince. Yeah, that's a nice bluegill, John. Yeah, no, that is gorgeous. And, and you, so if people come out and perch fish with you, you can kind of split the day and do this? Absolutely. We can do a little bit of everything out here. I think that's what's so neat. And give them, give me the timetable again now for October and November on the panfish bite. The perch? Uh, we go after the perch right away as soon as the water temps start dropping, but we can still go after gills and crappies all fall too if we want. Seriously? Yep. 
Into the cold November right, months? Yep, right up until it freezes, we'll be out here. And then when does your night walleye stuff start? I'm going to be starting that this week, actually. I'll be going out and pre-fishing my spots, and we'll be booking trips for next week. And tell the folks, now that starts late in the evening? Yep, we typically start 9, 10 o'clock. We'll fish for five hours in the dark and catch a pile of walleyes. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Check out this deal. Save 21% on the Rapala Rip and Wraps on sale, two for $11. <laughs> Very next cast. You know what I'm doing? I'm trying plastics. I know. I think you should switch to the worm. Well, Not sometimes, big, though, but... you know, when you're using plastics, and and I've caught a lot of bluegills over the years just on, on this little crappie scrub blade. Yes. Oh, yeah. A, we a all lot have. of times it'll catch the bigger bluegills, but today I think you guys are doing much better on the earthworms. <laughs> What's the difference between a good net and a great net? Simple. It's all in the features. Fortis nets by Clam Outdoors are tough. Safe on fish. Easy to use. And a telescoping handle. Learn more about Portis Nets at clamoutdoors.com. Kalen's Pendu Jig features a patented free swinging hook. This feature gives any soft plastic or live bait an added action no fish has ever seen. As you jig it, swim it, the free swinging hook moves up and down, giving your bait or lure an unpredictable action. This jig also makes your live bait or plastic stand up when you pause it, imitating a feeding bait fish on the bottom that entices more bites. The Pendu Jig comes alive. Kalen's Pendu Jig is available in four sizes and 12 colors. I love mac and cheese, so I thought it'd be so fun to add the Johnsonville Andouille smoked sausage to my mac and cheese today. All you have to do is make your mac and cheese, and for the andouille, what's so great, it's already pre-cooked, made with 100% premium pork, so just cut it up and then put it on the saucepan till it's warmed up, get your mac and cheese ready, and then add the andouille and enjoy. Wow, that was so easy and this smells delicious. I can't wait to try. Mmm, wow, that is so good. You can try Johnsonville Rope Sausage for free via this mail-in rebate. This is valid until November 7th. To find more recipes using the Johnsonville Rope Sausage, go to johnsonville.com. This feels like a nice one. Okay, so I, I'm oh, oh yeah. So I'm being kind of silly with the plastics, huh? <laughs> I think I'd go back to live bait, John. I think I will too. But uh, no, and, and you know, what a fun thing to do to, on a guide trip. And I want to mention to the folks too, what do they have to bring when they fish with you? Uh, just the clothing, a cooler to take fish home, and whatever they want to eat or drink during the day. So you got all the rods? Uh, yep. All the rods, tackle, and live bait I have covered. Oh, just it's going down. It's going down. <laughs> <laughs> there you Bomber go. fishing never gets old. And we should mention, you know, we're fishing in about six, seven feet of water, and, and I would assume to try and find these panfish, you really, you want to get out of the current areas, is that correct? What do you look for in terms of current? At this time of year, they start moving moving back to the weeds a lot. Most of summer they're on wing dams and heavy current, but right now they're transitioning back to some slack water areas with green weeds. <laughs> you <were just> Finally, <laughs> hey, look at that. See now, on the crappie scrub, you guys, there you go, that's a nice bluegill right there. Hey Vince, now that, that if you measure that, what are, you, what are you thinking, seven and a half, eight? I mean, those are just plump, beautiful bluegills. That's what I'm thinking. But that little crappie scrub, a lot of times I will use it when the bluegills are biting really good it just to uh, try and get the bigger ones, but that's a beauty. This feels like you a good one. You ever get tired of this, Vince? I don't, John. This is awesome. Look at that one. Ooh, nice. Another, another beauty. And uh, you've been doing this every day. Huh? You come back in, in your areas that you have, and boy, you you get a lot of them, don't you? Yeah, we kind of have a milk run of spots we go through every day. Some days they all work. Some days it's one or two spots that are good, but we're always catching something. <laughs> I think this one might be a decent fish. Let's see. Yeah. Hey, Vince, what are all those gnats uh, uh, flying around Blake's head? <laughs> uh, they're not bothering me. Well, they're bothering, bothering me. me. How many are there, Blake? A lot. I don't <laughs> I don't like them. 
No, that's another beauty right there. Average eight, eight and a half, I'd say, right? Yeah, we're getting some pretty good quality tonight. Here we go. Oh, now you got a perch. Oh, that's a nice, look at that. Nice. Hey, Vince. <laughs> I think it's time for me to go to plastics. Yeah, though, that, uh, that's on that grub. And uh, that's not quite as big as the perch that we were catching earlier today, folks. But uh, that's a solid nine-incher. This feels Ooh, like look another at, good look one. Look at Vince, Blake. Look oh, I know. He's on fire up there. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> I love the color of these fish, too, you know? Yes. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And, you know, one thing about the Mississippi River, you know, you and I were talking about pool too up in Minneapolis now that's polluted but when you get down to these areas it's mm. clean water right it is it's super clean and these fish aren't contaminated at all they're great to eat <laughs> it's like catching <laughs> them at well isn't it yeah look at this one. Ooh, yeah hold that up walk right up to the camera with that one that's a beautiful fish and and Vince again I, I want to thank you buddy it's been an awesome day I'd like to catch a couple of more before we go but again this this fishing it, uh, the walleye fishing you're going to start tonight but uh for the rest of the month in, in November pan fishing stays hot huh absolutely it'll stay hot right up until we're on the ice that's fun buddy this one actually is fighting pretty good oh that's why it's a largemouth bass, another species for the day. Look at that. So we've caught smallmouth, largemouth perch, uh, a sheep's head, and bluegills. Hey, what do you got? <laughs> I think I got a heat. Oh, a big crappie. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> another. Hey, Vince, turn around now. <laughs> Name the species today. Uh, I can't even remember. Okay. Perch, Blake. bluegill, yeah. crappie. Large mouth, small mouth, sheep's head. Is, am yeah. I missing any? That's a nice crappie, Blake. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, you get bigger ones uh, in November. Yeah, we'll be getting some bigger ones, but that's a great size right there. Ooh, I got one in the back of the boat now too, Blake, after you caught that crappie. And guess what I've got, Blake? What do you got? I have myself. I'm, look at that, Vince. That's a nice one. Boy, those are pretty fish, man. Now, the quality of the pan fishing today, folks, has just been incredible. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to quit yet either. The crappies start biting, you know? Yeah, little evening crappie bite. Vince Moldenauer guides the Mississippi River on a daily basis. For more information, give Vince a call. That phone number is 414-791-5534. 791-5534. Johnson pump wash down kit to clean up after my messy dad. What'd you say, Blake? Oh, dad. I use my Johnson pump wash down kit to clean my dock and my pontoon. I use my Johnson pump to get the boat ready for tomorrow's clients. Learn about the many uses of the Johnson pump wash down at getjohnsonpumped.com. Folks, you're looking at some shots of us ice fishing with Vince last winter, and he uses an airboat to get back into these little secret spots for the big perch. For folks that want to do it, you can take up to six people. And do you have any openings for the ice fishing? I do, John. Our calendar is about 75% full, so we don't have a lot of dates left, but we do have some, and they're going to go quick. Hey, thanks for a great day, buddy. Well, thanks for coming, John. I had a blast. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know where we're going to fish yet, but we'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm Blake Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Hey,